Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a $600 laptop from Acer. This is their Aspire 5. I've got the full part number listed in the video description and title because there are a whole bunch of different configurations on this one. But what makes this one unique is that it has a new MX150 GPU from NVIDIA, which is actually a pretty sizable upgrade from the 940 MX that used to be in these lower cost devices and in many cases still is because this GPU is first making its way onto the market. So we're going to be uh, taking a look at this and comparing it to the 940 MX that we looked at just a few weeks ago with a $500 Acer laptop so you can see what the differentials here are. Now I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, like many of these low-cost laptops, it's got a 15.6 inch display at 1080p but the image quality is not so great, especially when you go off center on the display. They always make a sacrifice somewhere to keep the cost down and they usually uh, choose the display over other components. So this is in line with what we've seen on the Dell laptop that costs about $700 as well as the other Acer we looked at, that's about 500 bucks. Not the best display, but if you're looking dead center at it, it's okay, but it's still a bit washed out and uh, not all that great, but it is nice that it is at least 1080p. It's powered by an i5-70 200U processor. This is a dual core chip that's been on just about every mid-range laptop we've looked at over the last couple of months. So the performance will be uh, on par with those. I found that through my web testing and all the other stuff I usually do. So a decent processor choice there, at least for an entry level machine. Eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of uh, solid state storage built in. It's an M2 SATA drive. And what we did on my extras channel when I unboxed it was pop open the uh, two spots for upgrade the device, you can upgrade the RAM. It has a single uh, slot available for RAM upgrades. So some of the RAM is on the motherboard. Uh, the other half at this point, the four gigs of the eight on this one is in a stick. So you can pop that stick out and put in another one, but the motherboard RAM is on the motherboard, obviously. Uh, there is a spot on the bottom here, oddly enough, for uh, swapping out a hard drive, which might be applicable to other units in this Aspire 5 line. This one does not let you put a hard drive here. So you have to take apart the entire computer and get a new M2 to SATA drive to slide in, but uh, those are easily found and uh, pretty standard out there, so you shouldn't have any issues bringing up the storage on this later if you wish. I like to use these portable USB SSDs for uh, gaming and whatnot just because they're easier to work with and you can swap them out here or there. Uh, battery life on this one is going to be about five hours or so. If you've got the GPU going, it will be less because uh, that certainly will eat up a lot more battery life. So if you're doing web browsing and word processing, you'll probably get about five hours out of this, but far less if you tax that GPU. And again, this has got the new MX150 GPU from NVIDIA that we'll be spending a lot of time on here in a minute, so we'll get to that uh, very shortly. Weight on this one is 4.85 pounds or 2.2 kilograms. It is mostly plastic, although the uh, top deck here is metal, so it does feel a little better than some of the cheaper generic machines we've looked at in the past. Uh, the keyboard here is your basic transportation. They are uh, relatively full-size keys, decent spacing, not bad to type on, uh, not the best travel in the world. I would have liked to have seen a little deeper travel on the keys, but you're able to type and get your work done on it. Now the keyboard, as far as I can see, is not backlit, so you probably will want to get a separate keyboard or something if you're playing uh, your games in the dark. The trackpad isn't bad. I did disable the tap to click on it just because it was very sensitive, and after I did that, I liked the trackpad a lot better. So it is a decent trackpad, nice amount of real estate here on the case, so I do think it is uh, definitely a passable device for navigating your computer or the web, and of course, uh, gaming mice you'll want to plug in via its USB ports. It does have quite a few ports on board here. Uh, you've got a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. Right here, you've got a gigabit ethernet adapter, which is always great to see, especially on a laptop you might be playing some games on, so you can plug it directly into your network. It has a USB Type-C port here. This is not Thunderbolt, it is only USB data. I tried uh, HDMI adapters on here, as well as a DisplayPort adapter. Those did not work, uh, but I was able to connect up USB devices. This is running at Gen 1 speed, so you're not going to get the 10 gigabits per second out of it, but you'll get uh, similar speeds to what you'll get out of here with the main uh, USB 3 port. So a little disappointing here. Every manufacturer implements USB Type-C differently, unfortunately, and we're still seeing a lot of fragmentation with how people are using that port. But you can plug it into an external monitor here with the HDMI output. 
You also have a card reader on the side here as well for plugging in your camera cards and whatnot. Uh, the cards do, I believe, stick out a little bit, actually quite a bit here, so uh, you may not walk around with it, but you can get your uh, photos transferred there if you want. Now, you do get another two USB ports on the other side of the laptop, but they are USB 2.0 only. So funny that we still keep seeing these slower ports getting manufactured. So if you do decide to use a USB hard drive like I'm doing, uh, plug it into the USB 3 port on the other side or use the USB Type-C port. These will be much, much slower, so I don't recommend doing anything more than a keyboard or a mouse on these two. You also have a headset microphone adapter here. On the bottom, you do have some fans to think about because you got to keep that GPU and CPU cool. You can see some of the uh, heat piping underneath the vent there, so you want to keep this vent clear. Uh, and you also should know that there is some fan noise with this one, especially when uh, the GPU is running. It's not terribly loud, but it's definitely there. It's not like a high-pitched sound, but you'll definitely be hearing fan noise uh, the more you push this computer. I also ran the uh, 3D Mark stress test on it to see how well it can handle with uh, full load over time. It got a score of 96%, which is not a passing grade on that test. So you might see some throttling uh, the longer you push the machine here. 96% isn't horrible, but it's not a passing grade uh, by that test. So just uh, bear that in mind. Uh, the speakers are also on the bottom here on either side. Decent stereo separation, not great, but about what I would expect for the price point here. So that is the overall hardware. Now let's take a look at a bunch of games and see how they run with this MX150 processor. So I want to start off with the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test. We run this one on a lot of our low to mid-range PCs. And we got a score there of 9,868 uh, with this machine with the new MX150 GPU. Take a look at the Acer E15, which is the same basic processor here, uh, but with the 940MX chip built into it. And you can see that we're getting a pretty sizable bump in graphics performance from uh, one generation of that GPU to the next, significantly so. You also notice the physics score is identical because they are running with the identical i5-7200U processor. So if you want to do a, a straight up apples to apples comparison of what this new GPU can do versus the one that uh, they've been putting into laptops for the last year and a half or so, you can see it right there. Significant gains in graphical performance. So let's take a look now at some real world examples of performance. We've got Grand Theft Auto 5 loaded up here first. I'll show you my graphics settings here so you can get a feel for what the GeForce experience recommended for this game. It's actually uh, putting things up a little higher than what we had on the 940MX when we ran with the same uh, features of the NVIDIA experience. So there's definitely going to be some increased visual quality here. Let me back out into the game itself and you can see now, uh, it might be hard to see up in the corner there, but I'm running at about 50 to 60 frames per second in most places. Where we've got a little more load on the CPU, it might drop into the high 40s. This is much faster than what we saw with the 940MX on that other Acer laptop. It was certainly playable on the other laptop, but it is much more playable here, uh, where I'm usually staying in the neighborhood of 60 frames per second versus being in the neighborhood of 30 frames per second. And I think I'm getting some better image quality as well. I am sure we can tweak down those settings and lower some things to get us to a solid 60 with this chip, which we could not do at the 1080p resolution here with the 940MX. So here is Street Fighter V, and on the 940MX we could not get Get 60 frames per second unless we drop down into its low spec mode to get us there. Uh, now you can run the regular game at 720p at 60 frames per second. That was something we could not do with the prior version of the hardware. Uh, so this is definitely an improvement. You can't run at 1080p, but you can get a very playable game at 60 frames per second at 720p with the settings turned down to low. Now, when we looked at the 940MX on that Lenovo computer a couple of days ago, we were running The Witcher at 1080p. Uh, we were only able to get about 20 frames per second or so at 1080p. Now we're almost double that, around 35 to 40 frames per second uh, at 1080p. And of course, we can uh, tweak down the resolution to 720 maybe to make it look a little better. I'm only capturing video here with my video system at 30 frames per second, which is why you're seeing some clipping there. But this does give you an idea as to the frame rate improvements we're seeing with this processor. So it really is AAA capable, 
provided you turn down your graphics settings or run at a slightly lower resolution with better settings. Now, I don't know anything about eSports, but a lot of you have been asking lately about Dota 2, so I figured I would load it up here and get you uh, some examples of its performance. So I have it running at 1080p, which is the uh, current settings of the monitor, and I put the, uh, the image quality here right in the uh, lower end of the mid-range just to see what we could get, and I am seeing usually about 60 frames per second here, uh, kind of like GTA 5, it might hover down into 50 frames per second when we've got a lot of things going on screen. This might also be a factor on the CPU uh, being what it is, so you will definitely be able to get to 60 frames per second here with this game if you adjust your graphics settings down to the lowest quality. So definitely playable here uh, on this $600 laptop with the new GPU at 1080p. Now in our prior 940 MX reviews, we were able to get the new version of Doom to run pretty well at 720p with all the settings turned down. Now with all the settings turned down, we can get the game to run at pretty much the same frame rate now at 1080p. So quite a, a big jump in performance here. So we're getting frame rates now, as you can see, uh, hovering near 60. Typically we're looking at about 40 to 50 here uh, as I'm running through the arcade mode of the game. Not bad at all, especially given the price point on this laptop and the fact that this really is the new uh, standard for low-end GPUs. Very impressive performance here out of a uh, chip that really doesn't consume any more power. In fact, I think it consumes less power than uh, the prior generation chips. So this is a really uh, huge step in the engineering process here of these graphics processors, and I am quite pleased to see the performance that we're getting out of the MX150. Now, one last thing to check out here, and that is how well it handles high bitrate video with Kodi. I've got our usual test files here. These are the Jellyfish test files that you can grab for free. I'll put a link to them down below in the video description. Uh, this one in particular is 140 megabits per second, HEVC, 4K at 10 bit. I realize this is a 1080p display, but uh, this will, of course, downsample it to 1080p, and it's a great way to see how well the hardware encoding is working on this particular computer, and it looks like everything is working just fine on it. Uh, one of the things that this new uh, generation of Intel chips has brought to us is the ability to decode some of this really high-end video in hardware, and it seems to be doing just fine here. So overall, I have to say this is a very nice laptop for the price. I am quite pleased with uh, this new NVIDIA GPU that I think we'll start seeing on a lot of other mid-range laptops coming up. But one of the things I like about Acer is they always come up with some way to get the least cost version uh, of this uh, particular configuration available to consumers. And I think for people on a budget looking for decent but not great gaming performance, 600 bucks here is a, a pretty good deal for the laptop. Uh, you can, of course, maybe spend $100 or $150 more and get a GTX 1050 base laptop, which will perform a lot better. But if you are really on a budget and have only about $600 to spend, I think your uh, money actually will be pretty well spent with this machine, even though I'm not crazy about the display. Uh, otherwise, it seems to perform uh, quite well given its price tag. And I'm very eager to see what other computers will see with this uh, new MX150 GPU in the very near future. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Tangential Soup Podcast, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.